And welcome everybody, esports fans and all, to another day of the PCS Summer Playoffs. I am so excited to get into this matchup today. Hello everyone, I am Pyrotechnics. I'm joined on this broadcast by the wonderful, the excellent Night Star, who's looking so fine. I do love that blazer, my friend. But before we talk a little bit more about uh, the matchup today, I do want to take a moment to thank our lovely sponsors for making the PCS possible. They are CTBC Bank, China Airlines, Chungwa Telecom, and Caliber. Thank you all very much. Now, Night Star, how the heck are you, man? I watched yesterday's games. They were fantastic. Today, we've got more fantastic games. You know, I couldn't be any more pleased. We've had some great stuff so far. Some really... Uh, some really crazy matchups, a lot of back and forth. I think yesterday we started off very explosive and it petered out a little more towards the end, but a lot yeah. of crazy possibility. You know, these teams, they're throwing everything they can because there are two world spots up for grabs. Mm -hmm. So many strong teams in the league this split. I have loved to see the evolution of the PCS squads. Let's take a look at how the playoffs have shaken out so far. As last night, we saw J-Team getting the 3-1 and one victory uh, over Hong Kong Attitude. And that means the winner of tonight's match between Boom and Machi will be facing off against them. But still all elimination bracket. You cannot afford to lose because then you are out of the playoffs, out of world's contention. Mm -hmm. We do not have a regional qualifier here in the PCS. It is all in the playoffs. And honestly, that's why the bracket is just so gosh darn big. Yeah, it's a very similar format to what we have over in the LCS. However, um, not as a oh, one less playoff slot or one less world slot. So yeah. that makes things just all the more contentious here. And Boom Machi, this is going to be a very up and down series, I feel, because... While yeah. yesterday we have J Team and Hong Kong Attitude, J Team a very stable team, Hong Kong Attitude, also a pretty one track minded squad. Today to we've it. got Machi and we've got Boom, and Boom is definitely <laughs> the team that you never know what you get in game and out of game. Yeah, they're such a hard squad to pin down, and I feel like much the way that Beyond in the spring seemed to come out of nowhere, this Boom squad really seemed to come out of nowhere. I don't know what the expectations really were. I, didn't, I certainly didn't expect them to get a whole lot higher than maybe like fifth or sixth place uh, initially, but they really showed up. A lot of individual improvement from some of the members. Uh, the teamwork at times has certainly looked a little bit shaky. A few team fights have been scuffed, but at the same time, they pulled off some impressive things. I personally think they were the team closest to taking out PSG uh, in that 49-minute game that I will not shut up about ever. Uh, it was just absolutely insane. And this is a squad that has shown that they can play to the level of their opponents, whether those opponents are at the very bottom of the standings or at the very top. But this is a tough matchup, Nightstar. Machi have got the two over them in the split. And ooh, I feel like everywhere the strengths of Boom are, Machi have... Honestly, better strengths, it seems. Yeah, for the side of Machi, like, uh, as we get to pull up their roster up here, Liga Gemini, Jimian, Atlin, Koala, this squad has played topside nonstop. It's been the Liga Gemini, Jimian show. And for the side of Boom, it's not necessarily a great matchup in that regard because. I would say their strongest players in as, as far as lane phase would probably go to um, Ruby and uh, Ruby and Rocky. So having those matched up by Lee Kai and Jimia, which I would say they're definitely a cut above, is going to be problematic. However, they do have a good matchup in that bot side. Waco Pop have been really outstanding throughout the split and Atlan Koala while they have stepped up in the last series it's been mostly a rough time for them overall in the split yeah if there is a exploitable side of the matchup uh, Atlan and Koala should be it because it's just such a a deep triple threat there between Likai, Gemini, and Jimmy. And But let's talk about their opponents today, Boom Esports. Rocky, of course, honestly one of the most improved players for me this split. 
has been very impressive, but he has to face off against a heck of a top laner. Alex will actually be starting today in place of Holo, but that doesn't really mean we won't see Holo as the team has pretty much dedicated almost a 50-50 to both these junglers. And of course, joining him will be Ruby, Waco, and Pop. And yeah, I think Waco and Pop have been big standouts for me. In, in terms of their skirmishing potential, things are a little chaotic, uh, but they certainly seem to get the best of their opponents a lot. But I feel like this team will rise and fall much more with Ruby and his, shall we say, unique champion pool. He's played six different champions during this playoffs. And, well, what do you know? It's In only six been games. six games. <laughs> yeah. The man six is... Games, uh, six champs. He's, he's a little crazy for sure. Uh, let's let's take a look at the head-to-head -head between the two teams, too, because I think one of the biggest things that stands out anytime you're talking about Boom is that game time. This is a squad that mm -hmm. communicates in multiple languages. This is a squad that has a hard time closing out games, and as you see, mm -hmm. they have one of, if not the most longest game times on average, 34-34. That was the regular season. Machi are a lot yeah. faster, but things start to get a little more even when it comes to certain objective control. Nash is actually very close, which means you know both teams actually getting a, a positive amount of Barons, but Machi are a team that are much more coordinated in the early game, and as a result, they pick up a lot of those early gold leads a lot more than Boom does. Yeah, and that just comes down to the fact that they're really more or less on the same page with each other. Uh, of course, this kind of goes back to the communication issues. We did have that interview with Wako early on in playoffs when Boom did get that 3-0 over, I believe it was Berjaya. Uh, and it was um, a little bit eye-opening, of course, uh, for those who didn't get to watch it. it. Boom do communicate in three different languages, broken English. The Korean players also kind of yell at each other in Korean. And then Rocky spills in a, bits and pieces of Thai along the way so it's definitely very messy communication structure and that leads to these extended game timers because they just don't have uh, everyone necessarily on the same page to close out in an efficient manner but they do still manage to close out quite often i think it's hard to count boom out despite some of uh, you know what i think a lot of teams would see as struggles for sure but let's get into the picks and bans. We see Thresh, LeBlanc, and also the Victor off the board that is uh, targeted directly at Ruby. He does like yep. some of those control mages, but they've left the Vladimir open for him. See if he ends up taking that. On the opposite side, it is going to be the Lee Sin banned away from Gemini, uh, but he will get the opportunity to play the Viego because that was left up and open. A lot of power picks. Gwen is available to here for Rocky should he want it. Gwen available. Camille is available. Machi have shown huge priority on that pick for themselves. And then there's also, of course, uh, the Ziggs pick, which Wakwa has shown he is very, very proficient on that mm -hmm. pick, same as Atlin, and it allows you to play heavy topside. And boom, they will open up with Syndra and Zin, a lot of explosive level six power, being able to just delete a member once you do hit level six onto the syndra but machi currently hovering the philios and i would say while philios is still a very strong champion in lane does run into a lot of issues when it comes to dealing with varus ziggs uh even mages when it comes to the mid late game because right. he, he's just really outranged by a lot of them yeah, and they don't have the Thresh to pair with them as Machi and Banded away themselves. So uh, definitely curious to see what they will add into the mix there and if Boom can exploit it. As you mentioned, that Ziggs is still available. Ryze will get locked in for Jimmy, and, and that's no surprise. It's one of his most played champions right after his signature pick up of the uh, Silas. And this mm -hmm. gives Machi a fair bit of global pressure, right? They can use that party portal to bounce around the map. I'm still keeping my eye on that... Uh, Diego, though, because, my goodness, I mean, in the hands of Gemini, this can be absolutely terrifying. Mm -hmm. On the opposite side, Boom are going to go ahead and spend their last lock in oh, the first phase. Okay. On a support pick, they go ahead and grab for Pop uh, the Leona. Okay, so not going for a bot carry, and that might open it up to being banned away as they now target out mm -hmm. Koala. Uh, if Machi are looking for bans, I would assume that they go for both the Ziggs and perhaps an Ezreal ban. 
or if they want they could also look for the ash ban but i definitely think you're looking at at least a zigs here and over on the flip side for yeah, boom there we go. yeah there it is i would assume that they're just going to try and ban out the safe supports just to deny protection from atlin i would even say probably a recon ban against koala as that's a champion that can do a really big number into a very heavy engage style coming in from a Zin um, and a Leona as you can really turn the tides, but they're actually going to ban the Olaf. So they're concerned that this Viego pick is a flex into the top lane and Gemini will go on to mm. the Olaf instead. Interesting. And for Machi, we'll see if they just go for a second AD carry ban, which is kind of what I feel, although they could go for something like a Camille ban if they're concerned, boom, we'll try and deny it. Nah, they go for the Ezreal anyways, and I think there's a lot of things you can still do for range purposes. You know, Jin is up and available if they want to lock it mm -hmm. in. It does seem like, boom, for their side, though, they really are trying to focus on, uh, you know, keeping that duo bot lane uh, off of some comfortable picks, and uh, as you mentioned, Nightstar, that's something that Machi... Uh, looking at this squad, one of the more exploitable sides of the map because they just don't play on that side of the map very often. So for Boom, this would be an interesting okay. change of pace here. But no, they switch it up and it's going to be a Jinx. That adds a lot of damage. A big old hyper carry for Wako. He has played it once already, this split, and honestly yep. was an absolute monster on it. Picking up the Jinx here adds um, a very good back line in the fact that you have Syndra and you also have the Jinx, but as expected, we do get to see Kwa pick up the Rakan, and it offers just so much counter-engage power here into Boom's composition. However, at the same time, uh, with this Camille pick, this is the pick we really expect out of Lee Kai, and Boom, I mean, they really should be fully expecting this pick, and should have uh, a counter lined mm. up as it will be the Volibear. So looking to try and just neutralize this top lane matchup and just bring more team fight power. However, this front line, while it is relatively beefy, it again, this is a pretty one dimensional front line here. They go in and it sets up for a very easy counter for Koala. And because they're pretty low range on that front line, it also just offers you a lot of value when it comes to having this Aphilios. So they see the Aphilios mm -hmm. and they still opt to draft this sort of front line. Yeah, it's a really interesting choice, but you know, it does feel like Signature Boom Esports. They have a, a lot of power to just kind of go in and make the big plays and it it's going to come down to, is it going to work out? Is that first engage going to work out? Or will there be a solid counter engage? I'm definitely keeping my eyes on Koala this game to see what his Rakan can do, to see if he can keep mm -hmm. Atlan safe. Um, on the flip side too, you know, Ruby going on a much more conventional control mage in the form of that Syndra. I feel like that's a pretty big priority target if you are on the side of Machi, right? Because... That's a champion that doesn't have a huge amount of mobility. If you can get into that back line, mm -hmm. all of a sudden you're looking at Gemini to just start going reset city. And if you can steal and unleash power, then you blow Wako up and boom, don't have a whole lot of damage after that. So I am a little mm -hmm. bit worried here. Machi have given themselves a lot of tools. Looking at the draft, do you, would you say you favor Machi in this game one? I definitely do. I think Machi, they have better scaling. They also have very, very good uh mid game and being able to one three one with this composition however for the side of boom the real big benefit of this composition is the fact that they can really really dive so as long as the lane phase gets extended they'll be able to use this volibear ultimate to dive top lane they can also bring it down bot lane with a teleport and dive that bot side and i think it really is just all about the lane phase here and exploiting or using this zin and Volibear combination to wreck havoc. I'll see if they can pull it off. Boom Esports taking on Machi Esports here to see who will move on to the next round to face off against J Team. Of course, that matchup, uh, I believe, will be in the next round. That'll be on Sunday. So just mm -hmm. tomorrow. You won't have to we'll wait long to find things out. Yeah. Now, let's take a look at our. Uh, <laughs> yeah, for a second, I was like, wait a minute, it is tomorrow, right? Ooh, time zones, they're crazy. 
Uh, let's talk about our setup here on mm -hmm. the side of Machi and Boom. You do see both bot laners actually going for that lethal tempo. Um, feels mm -hmm. like we might be in for some later game fights, and I'm not just saying that because Boom Esports are playing. <laughs> Boom Esports are definitely, you know, the premier late game squad. Uh, whether they like it or not, they will indeed just drag things out. And... Yeah, the lethal temple makes a lot of sense for the uh, Jinx, of course, because she does have that extra range, doesn't need to really rely on the Conqueror to get stacks or what, whatnot. Uh, more than enough damage, or you're just trying to maximize damage output. And same thing for Atlin, because of the fact that there are triple melee threats that are kind of just offering themselves at him. Uh, the uh, lethal temple is going to allow him to shred them even faster, especially once he hits two items with whichever uh, AD carry mythic item and that Lord Doms. He's going to be able to really, really shred mm -hmm. through them. Yeah, and that's something that Boomer going to have to be watching for, for sure. Um, he's gone cleanse this game as well. Already taking a little bit of damage, but Wako is uh, getting as good as he's given here. That's something that you do have to worry about with the Jinx as you... You know, do run the risk, uh, unless you're going to be exclusively rocket poking, and then maybe, oom, you can get outranged a little bit early on, but they're going to just shove the wave, pick it up pretty quickly. Now, normally, Viego gets permaban, so this series is already off to a different start. Um, where do you see Gemini going in this early game as he just dings level 3? I would be expecting to look for him to stick towards the top side, because even when... Uh, Machi do draft a more aggressive support. They still tend to play towards Likai and Gemini or Jimia. Uh, and I don't expect that to change a whole lot here, especially when you do have the easy setup coming in from Jimia, the flash stun onto Ruby that'd be pretty easy to set up with this rise pick and also having the hookshot wall dive to the top side for Elite Kai. Rocky gets the better of him in that exchange. And, you know, Rocky is definitely a player that I've had my eye on for the back half of this split because mm -hmm. in the spring, he really wasn't a super impressive player. He kind of liked to do the 1v1 me bro and, and didn't get the better of it most often. But now in, in the summer, he's looked a lot better. Definitely a mm -hmm. candidate for, for one of the most improved players in the split. but. The issue is Likai is also incredibly good. So might be one of the best, mm -hmm. might be one of the best top lanes in the league. Uh, and I wonder how well Rocky is actually going to be able to deal with him here. He picked a very neutralizing choice. It's still a bit of a comfort pick in this Volibear, and it gives the team a fair bit of engage in front lines. So, you know, I'm, I'm curious to see how it all works out in this matchup. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the Volibear does offer a lot in the fact that you are able to neutralize a lot of uh, matchups early on. You do, of course, get outscaled more often than not. Uh, but then you're still able to provide just a big frontline champion. Very similar to a Renekton, except you just don't drop off as hard because you have the extra utility coming in from uh, disabling turrets from your ultimate. Right, yeah, that's certainly something Boom could take full advantage of if they want to try and set up these dives. Because as you mentioned in the draft, they really do have kind of one direction. It is it is a go button. Uh, but as we are in a, a very quiet landing phase at the moment, mm -hmm. uh, just about five minutes about to pass, we are pretty much dead even. Not a huge difference in farm anywhere but the top side where Rocky has been able to get the outplay on to Lee Kai's Camille. But, you know, as the wave comes crashing, I would expect that to start to even out a little bit more. Mid matchup we hadn't talked about as much. Ruby, uh, definitely a, a bit of a coin flip in some of these matches, but now he's bringing both Pop and Alex to this party. But Jimian is wise to this. He's able to back mm -hmm. away. Rendezvous with Gemini, no problem at all. The like they're chasing. Land. Oh, they are going to be able to do it. He just stepped a little too close and nicely done on the second win there. Boom, do manage to get first blood and that will translate very nicely into a dragon. Yeah, and it's just really nice vision setup coming in from Boom Esports. They set up that triangle vision in that bottom river bush, into that uh, banana bush, into the raptor camp. So it's just such a nice triangle of vision that 
It allows them to secure that kill right before that ward expires. So uh, maintaining vision of Jimian and they're able to secure first dragon off of it as a result. So really nice stuff coming in from Boom Esports. I was a little bit concerned that we didn't see a faster gank coming out from the Zen as it did take until level four. And usually you want to try and attack a before you hit level five and he was definitely very close to hitting that mark um, so it was a bit of a slower approach but it still ends up paying off yeah they managed to do it so good start for boom esports translates into a quick dragon as well and i don't think jimmy and was really expecting the amount of vision coverage that uh, boom had been able to secure there mm -hmm. so first blood belongs to them while coming back into the lane see walk one pop a little bit low and that's going to be one knock up it only lands on to pop and Quick Flame Chomper, no follow-up engage, but, you know, it seems like the strategy for Boom is to kind of just play this landing phase and slow the game down a little bit at the moment. Mm -hmm. I wonder how well it's going to work out for them here. Yeah, and the big thing is you saw that trade of Vision down in that bot half. We have a pretty Boom-dominated red wards there, but on the top side, of course, this is where Machi are focusing their time around. Getting decent ward coverage there, although it does get cleared out by Alex. And now as we're getting close to eight minutes, this is where Machi, they they love focusing that early Herald. Um, th that's where most of their priorities lie. They don't really look for that first dragon that usually gets conceded. And even when they do pick it up, it's not until that thir or 12, 13 minute mark as now we're going to start seeing those recalls coming in and it's just going to be Mati moving their way up top side. Yeah, certainly seems like the, the main game plan for them usually. Alex will actually not be spotted on this, but Rocky mm. should give up the game. I like this from Boom. They've actually come in to try and take the Herald for themselves. Uh, trying yep, to undercut the Machi spawn. game plan in general, and you know, there's not a lot of reaction here. Pryo comes yep. through, and they should be able Way to secure this, late. but we might be in for a fight all the same. Alex is moving out, instantly oh, flashing all follows in, and that's going to be huge as Gemini comes up with one and gets the full leash transfer onto the Herald. Machi, the reaction time was brilliant as he goes over oh. the wall once again, oh, forcing Rocky to Stormbringer away. But they get can the chase, guys. yeah, Lika to get hand. Oh Whoa. boy, into the Hextech ultimatum. Rocky is absolutely going nowhere, gets the stun off. Gemini looking Wait, for her. Meanwhile, Atlan took out Ruby somewhere else on the map. Gemini getting kill number two. Machi, all of a sudden, they just get everything. And this is exactly uh, what Machi play for. It's regardless of the situation, they will go ahead and contest Rift Herald. And given the fact that they have, I would say, a better better skirmish, especially when you, of course, have Koala rotating early. It just really enables them to take that fight. We should get a replay very, very soon, right? Okay, this is a oh, here we go from Atlan. Great setup coming in from Atlan, going into Gravitum, and that's the last bit of Gravitum ammo as well. So being able to secure that one for squad really nice pick and atlan has been um a player that has stepped up massively for this machi squad doesn't get a whole lot of resources but given the opportunity he will take full advantage and make plays on his own so uh, he's really stepped up as of late you could look back to the last split really really struggled but now he's kind of carved up his own niche yeah, and just in time for Machi as well, you know, keep in mind, this is a team that looking back, the last time that they uh, were atop the PCS was in the summer of 2020. So they're looking to kind of reclaim their spot. They it was PSG talent, but, you know, Beyond Gaming come in, undercut them. They become a third place team since then. They're kind of looking to reclaim the glory and certainly Atlan looking to help them do it here as uh, Lee Kai actually going to stop Alex's back. Nicely done. But recapping what just happened, I mean, Machi, it seems like for a second they're going to end up losing out on that Rift Herald that they love to play for, but they see Boom 
uh, kind of stretching themselves a little thin on it, and they go in immediately. Koala with a fantastic flash engage enables so much. They get three kills, they get the Herald, they get top tower and a second charge off of Shelly. I mean, what a huge value play. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's actually really, really nicely done there. And now Jimian does have flash available. Ruby also has his own flash, and it looks like they're hunting. Yeah, Ruby's... I think oh. Ruby knows to be a little careful right now. Gemini already has two kills on this Viego. Uh, he's certainly looking to take it all the way, go for Reset City. And this is, you know, the nightmare scenario. If you're Boom, you do not want to let that Viego get even more fed. But they are going to try and force here on this Infernal Dragon. But Jimian's coming in for the flank play. Teleport already coming through. Who's going to go? They are going to go diving in on Waku's Atlas. Dead. The kill. They do manage to get the roof down. Do they have enough damage to finish the job? But Jimian is going to take down Wako. So it's a trade Ruby's of 80 dead. carries. And now Boom are just running for the exits. Leekai takes out Ruby and Alex. At least oh. is able to shut down one note. Okay, not bad. Uh, Be here. Yeah, so well, Machi, they end up trading up, but still not that bad, not that rough of a trade, I would say, for the side of Boom. But mm -hmm. again, this is a composition that a while it's has a really great scaling back line. This is the issue. When they're coming in from multiple angles, how do you keep your carries alive? Uh, your front line, all they want to do is just run forward. And that's exactly what they do here. And because of that, well, no one's left to protect Waco. No one's really left to protect Ruby. And your main two carries, they, they end up dropping. But because Dragon didn't go down, we get to have a second round of it, Ira. Yes, we do. And Boom certainly looking to oblige on this one. Super Mega Death, Ro Death Rocket comes out, but it doesn't really do too much damage. Alex is able to tank up mm -hmm. a lot here. But the Machi flank is still in full effect, and yep. this is a bad pincer. Flashing in, big knockup for Koala. Is the team enough to respond? Rocky Ooh. is going to take him down, but I don't think it's going to matter at this point because they can just shut everyone on the Boom side down. Lee Kai on the front line looking for more killing spree for him as he hops the wall for the double. Oh, and Jimmy and even hitting him with the Machi spam. That's going to be a 13-minute ace. And it's as clean as it can be. Yes, they do lose Koala. But remember, this is a fight that they don't have ultimates for. And they're still able to find the pick and be able to really split up that back line. And boom, they just go straight back into it. And that's the issue. All of a sudden, you're getting concerned from multiple angles and you just get collapsed upon. They don't have a good enough trigger to be able to force onto one of these flanks and everything collapses upon them. Usually when you see these kinds of flanking formations you just have to attack one of them one side of them super super aggressively but we don't see that coming out from the side of boom again it kind of goes back to the fact that uh, this is a squad that communicates in three languages so sometimes finding that go button can be a little bit difficult yeah i, I think this is the struggle we've seen twice now for boom esports is the decision making just not quite there, and unfortunately for them, Machi are cleaning up off the back of it. At under 15 minutes, we have 15 kills, and Machi have 11 of those. A full team wipe, it's one of the earliest I think I've seen this split, and critically, look at where the kills are. It's on the big carries, it's the team, it's the, the players that you want them on, on the Viego, mm -hmm. on the Camille, and even Atlan's been able to get in on the fun right now. So. Machi pretty much full controlling the map. Uh, Harold does reset a little bit there, but that's yeah, okay. And uh, at the moment, this is going to be a little tough for Boom to come back in. They played at deficits before, but this is almost 6,000 gold down at 15 minutes, Nightstar. Yeah, and as the game goes on, it's going to get harder and harder for Rocky, Alex, and Pop to just assassinate Atlin and be able to trade 80 carries at the start of the fight because of there is that shield bow built up onto Atlan. He has the lethal tempo, so he's going to be able to deal a lot of DPS and really shore up uh, any sort of sustain issues he might have in a fight. And 
Oh man, it's this Camille pick. It goes back to this Camille pick. The side of Boom, they knew it was going to be coming their way, and yet they still allow it to go through. Lee Kai, he... you know this guy will just pick this champ every single moment he can, and at some point, teams have to realize you just have to take this champion away. There are a lot of one trick players in this league and Lee Kai <laughs> has definitely shown that yeah. his big one trick is it, this Camille. It, yes, like he's good on other champions. Yeah. It's almost half his games he's played and he and he like they've won so much on it. It it fits the Machi strategy, right? Like this is the quintessential 1-3-1 mm -hmm. team and Lee yes. Kai is an insane player on a number of champions but particularly on champions like this Camille. You look at the other uh, champions he plays a lot of, you know, it's the Jace, it kind of fits the same mold. He has a handful of champions also, like the Fiora, the other side of that matchup, and I, I think the one outlier is maybe the set, but yeah, this is this is what Machi like to do, and Boom definitely need to be taking notes for the next draft phase, and they could still get back into this one, but it, it's, it's a pretty big deficit they found themselves in already, and you can see that Machi just don't slow down. They've already knocked down all of the outer turrets, the map is very open for them, uh, they've equalized on dragons, and we are going to have an ocean rift this game. I think uh, Machi yeah, will be pretty bushes. happy about that. The ocean dragon will shore up um, a lot of their issues into these extended fights against the Syndra, against a Jinx, but more importantly, the extra bushes just make it more and more difficult for the side of Boom to just try and face check willy-nilly there we go Man, turning the in damage already oh, coming out. Rocky. he's just gone yeah uh, he's oh, gonna dear. he's gonna be able to limp away but i mean you know something's gone wrong when all of those Stormbringers have to go in the reverse that's not <laughs> what you want to do if you're rocky uh, yeah that's definitely problematic and this is kind of the issue of volibear from behind is that well you don't get the extra utility of disabling towers if you're going backwards if you're going back to your own towers you, well i mean you, you don't disable those and now he's just kind of stuck in the same position that you would also say a renekton would be f put behind and lee kai is just going to constantly apply pressure to whichever lane rocky is in and now it, it's the full machi setup 131 and the big problem here though for machi is that they can peter out a little bit yeah we'll see if that ends up happening there's a lot of pressure on that bottom side as no stormbringer picks up the kill no stormbringer round two and he didn't have flash either so gemini mm -hmm. taking the ocean drake while they have three pushing on the bottom and yeah you know it's it's a different kind of one through one i suppose but it works jimmy is even giving ruby a lot of trouble because ruby you know, despite the early uh, kill pickup uh, opposite that Jimmy and found uh, Alex and, and Pop also at his back, uh, Ruby has just not been able to do much here. Now Jimmy in his hunting form, level advantage. This rise could certainly look to chase him down here. He's got the Everfrost. Uh, he's going to let him get he's away with waiting. it, though. Yeah, I, I think he was hoping that Ruby would use the Scatter of the Week and then just immediately turn onto him. Unfortunately, though, Ruby holds on to that cooldown. And mm -hmm. ends up with a really a good decision coming in from him. It's tense now, though. Uh, I mean, it's it's dangerous. Yeah. It's so dangerous to go far out. You know, we've had a moment of calm, but you can see just how deadly Machi are mm -hmm. at this point with, uh, you know, two of their three major carry players online. And then, of course, you know, Atlan's also pretty darn good, it turns out. Collector picked mm -hmm. up. Uh, he's He's been uh, given a number of resources this game. But, yeah. A little bit unfortunate that ends up being collector, given the fact that there's so many frontline units to just shred through and how much health that they're building. Mm -hmm. You would definitely favor something like a Lord Dominix, which does increase damage against targets that have more HP than you. And what do you know? They're pretty much all building health points over on the side of Boom Esports. Definitely would have liked that a lot more. However, mm. um, it gives him a lot more 1v1 potential if he's ever able to free fire against Ruby or Waka. But now Jimian is definitely in a lot of trouble. 
Oh, actually gets, oh, stunned, gets stunned out of his own portal, but here's but the counter the engage. Turn, Immediately in comes Koala into the huge amount of damage. Oh dear. Yeah, Gemini was able fair. to steal the uh, the scout of the week, or excuse me, steal away the ultimate from Ruby, and that immediately turns into a 21-minute Baron setup. Machi, I mean, you don't normally see snowballs this big, but it's happening, Nightstar. Boomer, a team that win slow but lose fast. Very, very Alpha Esports-esque in that <laughs> if things start going poorly, they just go for a lot of these Hail Mary pickoffs. However, they just don't have control of their own jungle, and that's why you see the response from Machi is just that much faster. Alex, even though he's on the same side of the map, just can't really walk up through all of those ocean brushes. And that just makes it difficult for him to support the rest of the squad. That's going to be Baron going into the hands of Machi, and we should be looking at something like a 25 minute game here coming in for game number one and for the side of boom esports at this point you just really need to hope and pray ruby and wako just have the most perfect uh, positioning in this next fight that they're able to just mop up i don't know if that's going to be enough even though i mean this is such a huge deficit we have uh, a 12,000 gold difference and look at how fast they're able to move in there. The flash into the Hextech ultimatum. Lee Kai on the front line, just deleting Wako. Atlan is able to pick off Op. Meanwhile, teleport comes in for Ruby, but the rest of the team is here, and that is going to be the siege on. Mm -hmm. Honestly, Machi, I feel like the reason they're here is there's nothing else for them to take on the map. They've gotten everything else right now. So the siege with this Baron so early on into the game, they're looking to try yep. and speed run this series so far. Yep, they've got waves coming in mid and bot lane, so no answer. Be able to collapse on both of these towers should be able to get both in hibs, and now it just comes down to where do Boom want to draw the line? When do they look for the engage? They've got to find something. Everybody's back up off Fountain at this point. Inhibitors though will go down to the Baron empowered minions, and Scatter of the Week isn't going to connect. Honestly, the better Scatter of the Weeks this game have been from Gemini. And that is saying something here, as you have a Fed Camille and a Fed Viego. Lee Kai immediately rotates top. Just going to back mm -hmm. away, though. Or no, he might keep pushing on this one. Machi, they just have such a tempo swing. Yeah, they just have full control of the map here, and they're just trying to force their advantages as far as they can. They know that this next fight could just very well be the game. You see stopwatches coming in from both of the solo laners. Lee Kai and Jimian are holding on to these. There now they're up. looking for a pick, but it's not onto a key member. No, not not what they needed. But you know, Koala's been very good at getting in and getting out when he needs to this time around. And also, the poke is becoming a bit unbearable. You see, Lee Kai is able to just keep firing away at that top side. Meanwhile, Nexus turrets under fire, and they're boom! Just so they just split. They don't pull the trigger. They're just getting dragged left and right, and now they lose a Nexus turret, and they don't even respond. They have to go, or they're just gonna lose. And they're just slowly bleeding out here. They don't know what the call is. And slowly but surely, there is no call. These super minions are going to start streaming in. Yeah, you just don't hear the calls coming in. There's no pains. This has been all a push since the Baron. Now, instantly, the Hexic Ultimatum, they go on to Wako. Deleting it's going to be a trade. But it doesn't matter because the rest of the team is able to clean up. Gemini taking down Pop, getting the reset, and getting access to just all those Leona abilities to clean house. Scatter the weak now as he takes down side of Ruby and Machi are able to come up with a victory in very quick fashion for game one. 25 minute game. Holy moly, man. Machi, they just run away with it since. I think they Someone were surprised just, even. Just, <laughs> just oh, bad away the Camille. Ended. Yeah, Pyre, just bad away the Camille. They, they're gonna have to. Uh, I, I think. I think Boomer gonna have to. That was, that was a stunner of a fast victory. Uh, mm -hmm. Machi in full control. I mean, that first blood on onto Jimian was just was but a memory. It was it, it was just such a series of great plays in Machi. They had they had a great collapse, and I think we really saw mm -hmm. the difference in these two teams' um, ability to really like set up fights. It's not about scrapping. It's about it's about getting good positioning because every single fight, Machi were just so much better at setting up for it.
Mm -hmm. And Machi, they just play this 131 play style so damn much that if you allow them into their comfort zone, they will absolutely tear you apart. And you saw in those back to back dragon fights, they just didn't have an answer, didn't know what to do to deal with this really push and pull kind of team fight positioning from Machi. And yes, that pick around that bot side jungle was very, very well done. But once it got out of the lane phase and boy, the lane phase end very, very quickly, you just saw they weren't able to force dives with this Volibear Zin combination because there was no lane to dive. Yeah, that, that really was the problem. Um, yeah, Boom, it felt like they never were were on the right page. Like they, 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 they came together to make plays. The problem was it just seemed like the decision was always kind of the wrong one. And then when they just got overwhelmed, you saw in that, in that final, I mean, I hesitate to even call it a fight because Boom never pulled the trigger. Normally, they do mm -hmm. go in, even if they know maybe it's not going to work out. But, you know, uh, some hesitation, maybe some playoff nerves. I don't know. Boom, you know, they've yet to have a clear, a clean series so far. You know, it's mm -hmm. been it's been one loss all the time. Um, but I I feel like this is not the same team that we saw face off against Liab not too long ago. Uh, and I'm, I'm wondering what's happened there. Machi, on the other hand, they look excellent. They got everything they wanted out of this draft. I think there has to be a, a lot of a lot of recalculation on what you're going to be banning away mm -hmm. uh, if you're booming this next one. Yeah, and it's just the second phase bans just didn't make a whole lot of sense. Uh, the Braum can make a little bit of sense there, and the fact that yes, you you have a Leona, you want to engage, and uh, but at the same time, the Leona has a lot more ability to roam around the map over the Braum as we get to see Lee Kai is the MVP of that last game. Mm -hmm. I mean, well earned. it makes a whole lot of sense. He he got fed and he just, he was an absolute nightmare for the side of Boom to just try and deal with. Yeah, Lee Kai, it just, it's, he's, he's a very good player all, all around and certainly shines when he's allowed to be the uh, side lane threat, but he was able to get into fights, out of fights. He was able to dunk on pretty much everybody. And you could see it in that kill participation, just a part of so many of those. Uh, and at certain points, he was just kind of straight up diving into the back line, deleting Wako off the map. And, mm -hmm. you know, well earned. Like on this Camille, he is just such a, a whole nother level uh, that you definitely have to think about banning it if you're boom. Uh, incredible performance from him. And I think Machi can certainly go into game two with a lot of confidence. Yeah, and it's just... There's certain players that you just can't give their their specialties to. You know, it's a leak on this Camille. It's uh, for the, you could even reference impunity with Top King and his Irelia yeah. and Moon Black and his Heimerdinger. These are just champions that are so incredibly hard to deal with that you just need to take them away, especially in that second phase when you have the ability to just double ban a player. Yeah, we'll have to see if it changes up, but we are going to go ahead and take a quick break. We'll be right back with game number two of Machi versus Boom.